Welcome to the webinar replay of our intimate conversation with Mary France Debray and Patrice Lausanne. Ben and I are good friends of theirs, but we've had such a beautiful conversation here that we get to share it with you. I know that these are two of the best coaches in the world, but they're very down to earth, and you're going to find that in this video. So, without further ado, from the beautiful location of ProSkate, where this was filmed, I hope you truly enjoy a conversation about what it means to be a team coach, an Olympian, and a leader. Enjoy. Ah, everyone's saying hello, bonjour. Hello, bonjour. bonjour. What are we at? 31, we, should, we probably okay. should try to make this a little bilingual. Ben, how's your French going? Do we have some French? <laughs> <laughs> we have some people who speak French in our crew, our crew and our, yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Eight. I think Arnaud is actually in uh, France right now. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, fun. Yeah. Well, we're good at Franglishing everything, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Awesome. Well, I think we're like all two minutes early, so maybe we'll set the stage a little bit, right? Okay. Set the vibe. So um, this is an unprecedented event because we've never done you guys together, us together, yeah. all in one call, all live. So I'm pretty excited about it. So good to see you guys. Yeah, good to see you guys too. Good to see you. <laughs> How's everything in Edmonton? It's good. It's finally spring instead of freezing. No more snow. Oh, no finally. more snow. It's all gone. Yeah. No more, yeah. No more snow. <laughs> getting some green grass too, which yeah. is uh, which is nice to see out there. So you know, it's uh, it's definitely May, and we're looking forward to uh, yeah. a good month. So. Yeah. Good. It's good. And Montreal is warmer-ish. Warmer-ish. Yes. Uh, I think it's going to be really nice for the next couple of days. So start doing some gardening, maybe. Perfect. Hopefully and the weekend. The yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Awesome. Well, for the attendees, I know that's not, probably not your first webinar because we're all living on webinars these days. But just in case, of course, we have a little chat section down below. And if you have questions during the um, presentation that come up, just throw your questions in the chat. We will fold them into the conversation. We will do our best, and of course, it always depends. If the chat blows up, then we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. But um, we just want to encourage you to fully participate and listen in. Of course, you can also multitask if you need to as well, because everyone's busy these days. But we're really, really, I think, honored not, not only to be friends with you guys, but just to watch you, to see what you do. And so I think it's really fun to share all that with everyone today. And um, we're going to start with a little bit of a bio. I, but I want to say, you guys are not not working. This is, we, we appreciate your time because holy cow, I mean, when you manage a, a school and the teams that you do, I think it's 20 teams from all over the world mm -hmm. and a coaching team that services the teams. I mean, this is, this is huge for you guys to take this time out. And I know that although you're not on the ice, um, you're still managing all those schedules and, and so on. So thank you. Our pleasure. <laughs> All right, Ben, you are the bio king. Well, so, bio king, and you, you know, I had to, well, I, I do because I went through it all. And, you know, just going back through so many years of when we were on Grand Prix and when we were on world teams and, and just so many great memories with you guys, too. But I remember your bio of, of your results, too. It's all up here. Five time Canadian champions, two time world silver medalist, and Olympians. How about that? Boom. And, you know, multiple Grand Prix um, and, I mean, of medals and successes. And it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's just great to have you guys on this morning. And, uh, and again, like Jadine said, just such great I have friends. To, I have so. to bring it up. Look what we found. We're at ProSkate, yeah, yeah, as actually, you guys can see. This is going to be good. Check it out. <laughs> we got... Um, you may have forgotten. Yeah, but we have it. But we have not forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, How beautiful. Found a whole package of this as we're moving. Like, oh, yeah. I bet. Maybe you need like a, a sport room. Hey, a memorabilia spot. <laughs> Those of you who have never seen Marie France and Patrice skate together, you know, the amount of innovation you guys did as skaters, I know we're talking about it as coaches now, and I get that. But if we go past and look at that, you guys were innovating with lifts, you were innovating with choreography, using different movement, different ideas in ice dance as you were working together. So I kind of want to start there. And when you guys first met, right? Did you guys know you were going to just be like chemistry like that and create new stuff? Or did it take some time? How did you guys build that together as a skating couple? 
Well, um, we started with Paired Together pretty late in our life. Um, I think we were 20, 19, 20, 19 or 20 or something like this when we started skating together and we've had previous partners and we were already senior. So to each other, we were each other's last chance to make it uh, in skating, I think. And we were very good friends. So this started our partnership. We really wanted to have a great experience as people also and not just uh, thrive for results uh, regardless of you know how happy we were. So this was a, I think the basic of our partnership was finding somebody that I really liked to be with, that I uh, admire, that I was a fan of how his head worked because he's much more of an engineer and I was much more of an artist. Um, so I think the contrast and the fact that we're so different uh, and we challenge each other a little bit, well, mostly positively, but we do challenge each other. Uh, I think this helped us innovate and, um, and it also helped us have uh, wider vision. Um, and it's also what we liked about Ice Dance. Uh, we come from the watching uh, the Duchenne's and Dover and Dean, and it's what uh, draw me and Marie France too to Ice Dance is the innovation and making new programs every year and trying to reinvent yourself all the time. Uh, it's, it's what we like. So, of course, it's what we try to do every year. I love it. I love it. I named the webinar Leadership, Innovation, and Results. And it's like you just described it for me. So thank you. <laughs> I feel like you're in my head. But I think it's really key what you say about being yourselves and liking what you're doing and then innovating and connecting. And then the result is sort of like out of that instead of thinking only result first. And I think that's a common theme throughout what you guys provide to everyone. So I thank you for just jumping right into that. So that <laughs> You okay. are the next question well, I'm, asker. I'm going to do the next question. I'm going to go to Patch for this one. Okay. Boys love this. And yeah. And, and so Patch, like what is your favorite memory you have of your early days together? Mm. And then what was it like having to leave Canada to, to train in France as well? Mm. Uh, actually moving to France and uh, is probably one of my favorite me memories. The whole setting up. I like, I like moving and new adventures and new challenges and 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 just moving to France with our eight suitcases and uh, shoving it in a car when we got to the border with the dog. Uh, <laughs> we had a huge dog, a Bernese Mountain Dogs. So if anyone is a dog lover, you know how big these dogs are. So it wasn't subtle. <laughs> it wasn't a subtle move. We had the big huge bag, Canada bags from Olympics and a huge cage with a with a dog right. in it. And I remember crossing the border and we didn't even have a, a rented apartment. We were just, it was quite an adventure. We had to stay at a, a little like Airbnb Our, sort of thing. It wasn't called Airbnb then, but we, we rented an apartment and in the mountains, in the mountains and for was... summer training. And uh, yeah, we went to Ikea and just bought everything all at once for the for an apartment in Lyon. And it was, um, yeah, it was scary, challenging, but it also, it pushed us to become, um, I would say a CEO of our own company. Mm -hmm. This is where we took charge of our life, took charge of what we were doing. Um, we started to envision ourselves as the CEO and owner of Dubreuil and Lozon brand and we were doing what needed to be done to have the success that we wanted to have, hiring just the best people to help us get to our goals and this is where this mentality started. Well Love this. I just got chills like you reminded me so much we went through a similar thing right? At very early in the relationship, move across the country, mm -hmm. no support, my suitcases, and, and you have to rely on each other in such a really full way. You can't, you know, I remember getting mad at him one time and I'm like, I'm out. He's like, where are you going? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Across the country or across the ocean, it's yeah. <laughs> home, right? And then you have to rely on each other and and discover new culture and new well we had a similar language but really different you know when mm -hmm. people talked to us they knew we were not from france and it was getting uh, acquainted to speak a way a different french so they could understand us but mm -hmm. still 
being ourselves. It, it was a, um, it was a fun challenge, yeah, but we met un wonderful people along the way. And when everything is a challenge and when you have to refine everything, like we had to find a trainer, find a, an apartment, find everything we, we needed to do was new and we need to re learn how to do it. Uh, even skating, even, even opening a bank account was yeah. different. So then you have a, an appreciation for everything after that, like you, 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 you know how lucky you are when you do when things do go well and things are easy. Oh, that was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> but going on the ice started being easy because the rest was so complicated yeah. around us. So, uh, yeah, so the ice became our temple. This is where we were comfortable. This is where we were so good at what we were doing. And um, yeah, all these challenges in life though make you go, grow so much. And along the way, we'll, we, we met Romain, which is mm -hmm. one of our colleagues now at Ice Academy of Montreal. And uh, we've met some wonderful people that, that were just on the same journey as us. I love it. I love the perspective. And I just realized for the first time, I don't know why, but moving across the ocean like this, you would actually have the perspective now of your dance teams that come to you. Mm -hmm. You can actually relate to them going through that big change of actual culture and so on, right? Yes, yep. and uh, definitely. definitely. And also, I think our career started later and we still had a pretty good long career. Um, and all our life experiences through this really help us to mentor and to coach those teams. Like we know what they're going through. We know moving away from home is not easy. We know training, you know, till you're 30 through injuries and uh and achieving your dreams and then sometimes it's a deception like we've we've been through this so even if we're still young coaches because we only been coaching just 10 years uh i feel our experience as competitors and uh show skaters and everything we did in skating is really helping us mentoring those top teams yeah i don't think we would have been the coach that we are today if we didn't do the move in france and then we didn't take ownership of our own career and we didn't we're, we're actually forced to to make those moves and those decisions but it's what made us the coach that we are today i think mm -hmm. i love it i love it it's all it's all a journey and but i do have to call out this in 10 years do you know how many international medals no, no. <laughs> <Those> skaters <laughs> you know why because there's too many to count that's why it's <laughs> I don't think it's it's possible to count. There would be too yeah. many like the athletes. There were too many athletes. Yeah, yeah. Multiple. It would be hard to count. Yeah. I think it's great. I think it's great that you guys don't don't really seem to worry about the number, but you worry about um, the connection you're making and the contribution. So in that, I know one of the huge contributions that Marie you bring to the table is your artistry and your choreography and and fully that's become like a brand into itself i know you have the brand of you too and then the brand of i am but of course the choreography brand and the art brand did you always know inside when you were skating that you were this artist as well or did it develop kind of later as you start to coach well funny thing um i think i was born a choreographer um my, my mother always said that before I even walked, I was twizzling around and, you know, and dancing. I was always in some sort of imaginary world where, you know, everything was a dance. <laughs> Going to the fridge was a dance. <laughs> Going to the bathroom was a dance. So, uh, and as soon as I can remember, I was five years old doing choreographies. Uh, for the older people that were just on their, ba their balcony. It was not isolation at all, but you know, there was a time where uh, older people didn't go out much. So they come on their balcony and I was organizing shows with all my neighbors to give them, provide them some entertainment. So tennis rackets or badminton rackets became guitar. We did I Love Rock and Roll with all the hair, you know, <laughs> air guitar and hair flying around. And uh, I decided on costumes and created lifts and I wasn't even skating yet. So this like, I think this was in me since forever. Uh, every Christmas party and sorry family, they had to watch the show. <laughs> so it was, all, there was always a show somewhere. And um, so I think this was in me for a long, long time. But then be, becoming an athlete was interesting. I don't think this part was in me. This I really had to work on, becoming an athlete. But be, uh, being a dancer, an artist, a dreamer, 
connected to the sound and the music. That's not the most obvious. This always was what triggered me. Um, to me, the music is a conversation and I'm always able to hear the little instrument that makes it interesting. And uh, I remember my mother say, saying when somebody asked me if I would do a ice dance with, the, with their son, said, my daughter can't hear the beat. She can't even move on a beat or skate on a beat. How can you, how do you expect her to do ice dance? Like she, it was just beyond her. Uh, she thought I had no talent in hearing music. Uh, just, I was hearing the music differently. Yeah. And, uh, and I think this is a part of me that I was ashamed of at first because it was natural for me to find a one in a beat or to count music. Mm but I understand the other part of the music that not a lot of people hear. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. I love this image of you choreographing everyone in the neighborhood and, and just that thread. Actually, when you pull that thread, you hearing the other beat in the music where the, un, the hidden piece is, is woven through everything you're doing, really. So. Oh, thank you. But, but you can even ask my, my teens, I mean, as soon as they say, can we put counts on, on what we're doing? I'm, uh, I'm not an accountant, <laughs> but let's just push the artistry of that. And once we have the general idea, we can put counts. But if I start trying to count too early, then it takes away some of my creativity. So I have to really juggle with that, you know? Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. So we so next we want to move on to obviously we could talk about the art forever. Marie and I would just get lost there, but I know Ben, you were curious about um, Patch's view. Yeah, on the we're school. we're going to go to the the accounting part of it here too. Yeah, but <laughs> but that's right, Patch. And, and I think again, man to man, this could be the question. So what initiated your initial vision of an international skating school, and what was the gap that you saw in the world of skating? Ooh, <laughs> but the school was always, uh, the minute we left um, Montreal to go train in Lyon, the, the, that's what planted the seed of the school is I was, was, I was, was mainly from me at the beginning as I was, I was very disappointed that I had to leave Canada. Uh, I didn't understand why I couldn't keep training in Canada, the home, like a home of figure skating is a high rinks on every corner. Uh, just in Montreal, there's just on the island of Montreal. Montreal's an island, if you didn't know. <laughs> there's, uh, there's close to 100 ice rinks on the island. Wow. And at the time when we moved to France, there was, I think, 30 ice rinks on the whole country. Mm. So it didn't, it didn't make sense to me. Like, why am I moving to a country where figure skating is not a national sport? It's like very far on our list of, of practice sport. And I come from a country where it's, it is a one of our national sport. Is everybody does figure skating and why can't I train in Canada? So it was our goal and it was my goal at the beginning to make sure that once we're done with our career, to come back to Montreal and start a school. And if uh, people uh, wanted the opportunity to train in Montreal, they could. And I just want to point out that in those years, none of the top teams from Canada were training in Canada. Everybody would train in the United mm -hmm. States or somewhere else. Wow. There was no um, coaching that could bring it to that level at that point. Yeah. And for a long time. For so a long even time, after yeah. uh, we left, like Tessa and Scott, uh, actually Tessa and Scott were uh, the, a national, the first national champion. In, train in Canada and win since, uh, um, since uh, Tracy Wilson and Rob McCall to win national, mm -hmm. uh, like, win a world medal while be training in Canada. So it took a long time. World title. A world title, no, just a world medal. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Wow. So it took a long time. Uh, so that was the, the, the dream behind it. <laughs> and making it international is, is it's just what, it wasn't a goal, it was just, it's just what it is. Like when we trained in Lyon, uh, we were an international school. Uh, mm -hmm. Every high school, like every school of high caliber and ice dance is international, uh, just, it's just the way it is. It's, and it make it makes it fun. Uh, we love to train with our uh, closest competitor. It drove us every day. It doesn't work for everybody, but for most people, it can drive you when you w wake up in the morning. You don't feel like going training. You show up to the rink and you see your closest competitor doing a full 
run through our nice program and they're, they're, they're doing some, something super nice, you're, you're motivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you an idea out there. It's in front of you. Yeah. Wow. I love that. Well, it sounds like you had a vision of wanting to be um, in the role of coaching from, you know, early in your skating in a way. But, um, okay, I'm going to try to ask this one in French. <laughs> doing my best, but votre philosophie en, en entraînement, c'est quoi? So your, for the people not speaking French, your philosophy of coaching, um, and this is to both of you, what is your philosophy of that or how are you developing it? It's probably ever-changing, but... Mm -hmm. what, what's um, you? Our main philosophy, I think, of coaching is, is the same that got us skating together. Um, it's the overall well-being and happiness in the journey and not being just goal driven um i think you know uh, a competition a medal is great but if the journey along the way was not pleasurable if you didn't learn if you didn't you know sweat laughed and uh it's i don't think it's worth it I, I mean, you know, you can learn to chop the all you want or triple axel. What, what, what is this going to serve you in life if you didn't learn, you know, what it takes to get it? Like, learn to fall, get up, learn to laugh if you, you know, if you're stressed instead of uh, going into the, the stress mode and being you know, afraid. And th these are all skills that you learn as an athlete, as a competitor. Um, and this is what, what we like about coaching also is supporting our athletes going through their career, but, but becoming, well, champions inside out, meaning dealing with, with sometimes challenges and, and stuff but in a way that will make them grow, in a way that will make them responsible athletes, uh, people that will be at the top of the podium at Olympics and then have a vision of what's next, a vision of who they are as people also, because they, they have something to contribute in the world way past a triple axel or a chakra, you know? So uh, they are inspirations. And so it's, it's really, it's the overall holistic approach of coaching and of becoming better people along the way to the podium or to the medal. Super inspiring. That is amazing. <laughs> well, I think, I, I don't know what you think, but I think from the outside in, it looks like just like this amazing training center with all the results. Like if you just look just on the surface, it's just like, oh yeah, they must like be talking about that gold medal every, every single day. And it's, uh -huh. the thing is it's the opposite. It's, the leadership, it's the innovation, it's the connection to that journey. And I'm just, I'm glad you're, you're having a place to say this out loud. I think it's really important for all of us to remember and hear about, so. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, I think, I think it's also, it set up a, a different mentality, a different culture, a different ambiance in the rink when, you know, you have all these competitors, been, but in a way they're a team. Mm -hmm. They're in this together. Nobody knows better what uh, Gabby and Guillaume are going through than uh, Maddie and, and Zach or, you know, nobody knows better than their, their competitor. Nobody. Yeah. You know, it's tough. It's a lonely road to the podium. And when you're a champion, it gets lonelier sometimes. And surrounding yourself with people of the same, same community, same mentality, uh, you know, they push each other on the ice all the time. And if somebody's down, the full group is there to support them. But in competition, they, they do their stuff. And yes, it is a competition after all, but, but this is only 20% of their, of their training years <laughs> at competition. The other 80%, sorry, but the other 80% is, you know, is training. Yeah. Is, is and when it works really well, they really understand that dynamic. Um, when they use each other, when they don't get jealous of, of what the other people are doing or getting, that they understand that they have to become the better version of themselves. Like if they keep improving themselves and becoming better in every part of their, their training or, or of their life, they understand that they'll get the result that they want. Yeah, uh, and it's epidemic. You, you see it in the, you know, in the whole school. 
Mm. That it's like, you know, it's like a, a virus. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the positive pandemic. <laughs> uh, and it, as coaches, we have to be, be aware of this and, and maintain it because it does, it does switch us sometime. And then, mm. then there's, there's a, like the good energy will spread, but the bad energy will spread even faster. So you have to be very aware of it. Yeah, that's one of our main thing is, you know, there's a crescendo that goes up and sometimes when we feel it starts going down, we have to reverse it because it could, it could go as fast the other way, of course. Um, but so far, we've, I think we've chosen people to be in our school that fit the mentality of what we're, of, of our, that fit the mentality of our philosophy of training. Mm -hmm. That's so great. It's uh Wow, it's it's cool. What do you think? Yeah, it's neat. That's a really uh, that's a really good point of view. I like the the energy thing. It's, it's just so important because I know that the, you know on the ice there's energy, right? And how it's managed. And you see them do this, and then okay, what, what do we need to do? Yeah, it's, I I agree. It's a very interesting um, dynamic when you have that. So I just I really appreciate bringing that up tonight. Well, it's really cool. You're aware of it, and you feel it. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah. Anywhere in the in the school, it's either it's within the coaches or within the athletes when somebody doesn't fit with the the group uh they'll they'll eventually they'll leave or they'll they'll be they'll, or they'll get injured or, or they'll, they'll get, injured, get like or, they can't when it doesn't fit i don't know life just organizes stuff so they they find their own way and and go somewhere else and that will we're very aware of this and we're very open to these, you know, this rotation or this shift when somebody's not happy, it's, they can't, they, you know, they it's have to find it's, something else. It's not, uh, it doesn't work for everybody. Like as, as athlete doesn't, that environment doesn't, some, some athletes will need uh, a more uh, coaching team that is more uh, solely based on them and really focus on them and not as a the whole team approach. Uh, same thing with coaches. They need some coaches will need to have the the more feel like they have a more important role, not as just being part of a team. Uh, so yeah. it's, it's not, not it, for everyone. it's not meant for everyone. So you have to be aware of that. For sure, it's cool. You guys talk about energy and obviously taking this stand that that is so important. Um, we obviously coach together just like you and uh, there is a spouse thing there's an energy thing um and we often talk about you know at home you know pushing through our own adversity and showing up as a team and really united is very important for the athletes so how has being a spouse to each other affected your um, ability to fight through things maybe or to get through those challenges and then coach in a better way like how does how does being that team on and off the ice and in all ways help you guys to be a great coaching team, do you think? Um, well, I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, I mean, we're very different. And sometimes, you know, Patch will take on a, a role of, um, of a little bit more technical director or this or that, and I'll take a different role. And, you know, there's other, and then we have to take care of the whole coaching team. So there's a dynamic that's very natural that just that we flow with like we're not always together coaching he has his own thing going i do my thing he always has an overview to make sure there's a flow in the coaching uh with the coaching as well as with the skaters um so being very different and we're never in each other's way sometimes if, if there's you know it's never easy to say to your spouse uh, uh, I don't really like what you choreographed there. There's always like a little touchy moment for sure. But, you know, in the years we've been together, we've also learned to put the ego aside and just get, you know, stuff done. Because at the end of the day, we're just all happy if people are attaining goals, they're happy, they're growing. So it's not about us anyways. So we're just trying to keep the egos aside and make things happen. Yeah, I think one of the aspects that makes it easier when you're uh, uh, with your spouse, it's it's like coaching in a team, the one aspect that's the hardest to manage is, is the ownership of uh, mistakes or success or, or both. Like, so, um, like if Maggie France does something and I'm as, I'm as proud of it and I see it as much as me when she does it. And then I do the same 
with the school, with everybody, but I think it's because it started like that with us. Like if she does a choreography and then, and I'm as proud of it because she did it. Uh, and I feel as, as the, the same success or I, I'll feel the failure the same way. And to really work in a team, you need to feel like this with everybody within the team. So uh, like when we get success in the school, I see as we, it's as much my success as Marie or, yeah, uh, Romain or Pascal or Jose or Ben or everybody that works with us. But failure is the same. So it, it's, it's the ability of seeing that as through, like, through a true team that makes a difference and starting it from our relationship was probably made it easier. Love that. Do you have any thoughts about that? I know. No, I just think it's excellent. I just think, you know, it. <laughs> with, with, again, the whole marriage and the working and mm -hmm. the whole conversation is being won probably most of the, most of the time, because we, you know, I don't know about I was speaking for myself or maybe Pat, but I find it really hard to turn off once in a while, once we're engaged in this kind of level of conversation all the time. So it, I guess that's, that's really interesting to hear is that it's just an ongoing, um, conversation at all times that's that's really cool that we're like you say marie wouldn't happen any other way i agree it's, yeah but it's, it's, it gets to be really cool now i like i notice it more uh, like i'll show up to competition and like we're a big competition i'll be at world championship and one of our top team is on the ice and they show their name on the screen i look up at the screen i'm the one beside the board but my name is not on the screen it'll be <laughs> romain and marie france or the coaches and i so cool <laughs> <laughs> that's great talk about sharing yeah. i love this that's really really good <laughs> i love it now one dynamic you guys have experienced that we haven't had the fortune is to become parents and i wanted to add i don't know i think there's got to be a change i'm sure a change in perspective of life period but did it affect how you guys coach because you know we're mentoring young people right we're trying to help them grow but did the event of becoming parents, like maybe, maybe even a mom to you, Marie, like did it, did it shift your perspective on coaching or your relationship of how to relate to young athletes? Do you think um, at all? I don't know. That's a good question. The thing that it shifted in me to have a child is the realization that, mm, that now I was a real creator. I think if you can create a human cell by cell, you can create anything. And that for me was a huge confidence boost that now that I, I was able to create a perfect human being, I don't think there's anything I, like, there's nothing I can't do. So uh, I started creating from a whole other place when uh, after I had a baby and yeah. This, this was the bigger shift. As in relationship with the, with the skaters, I'm not sure it changed that much because I think there's a huge difference between being a parent and being a mentor and a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying not to cross the two. I would never coach my kid. I think being a mom is big enough of a role and Billy Rose knows it. And as soon as she, because she dances and, you know, she, she has that, that gene in her, that genetic. And if I try to be a little bit of an artistic director to her, she's like, mom, you know, you're my mom. I love you, but you're not my coach. <laughs> so, and since she's young, she's been telling me this. So I think we've, I've done a good job not crossing things. And uh, for, for my skaters, I, being a mentor is, is awesome. And I love them, but from a different heart than the heart of a mother. Well, that's what you call a Marie France mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens, baby. <laughs> wow, this, this is beautiful. It's almost like a, creating um, Billy Rose was taking the pressure off of you as a creator. Yes, I think so. I love it. Woo. Okay, well, you ask another question. Well, you know what, and, and this one this one coming <sighs> up, I think, is, is really good. I mean, we... We also partner with Stephanie Hanlon. I know Stephanie Hanlon came into my life at a very important time when I was in a big transition and continues to be a huge mentor, role model, coach um, in our partner. business partner in our lives, um, as well as I know yours. But it, it's, it, she also um, has the win philosophy. It's the what's important now. Mm -hmm. Really 
I've, I've really tried to take that and, and stay present with that <laughs> philosophy at all times of what's important now, when. And, and now more than ever with, of course, this quarantine time with uh, COVID-19, um, focusing on what's important now obviously is paramount, but how are you two approaching this with I am in Montreal? I think that's, that's a really interesting like question. Like, yeah, incorporating the win, incorporating the what's important right now with, with the, the I am in, in Montreal. Yeah. Well, um, this is a, I think it's an everyday philosophy, the win, right? Uh, when you start playing with this, I mean, you, you can't take it away. <laughs> part of you. Um, but um, I think a way we did it during the pandemic is, uh, as all of you know, Worlds were cancelled only three days before the, the mm -hmm. opening of, of the championship. And all of us at IAM were so looking forward to this moment where we invite the world into our, our hometown. And all the kids that have been, that have been training here for years, they see it as our, their second home. And they were excited to get their families and fans and, and compete at the Bell Center. It's such a beautiful rink. And right downtown, like we had all this fantasy about, about worlds in Montreal, right? And when worlds uh, got canceled, uh, for us was what's next, right? We, we cannot leave this whole group of people. So our effort to implement the, the win was really, what do they need now? What do we do now? How can we support them? How can they still be a community even if now they're going to be a part? Um, so almost right away, we started to, uh, to get them together on uh, Zoom classes, uh, Pilates, yoga. Uh, we we set a schedule so they could still feel like they were part of a community, even though they were all separated, each in their in their apartment. And a lot of them, I mean, they're from different countries, so they don't have full coverage for healthcare in Montreal. So it was scary for a lot of them. So just staying connected, doing one on one meetings as much as we can. Um, you know, and just supporting them and taking that pause that the whole world, this whole world is on pause or on reset, see it as, as you want, but you know, there's a reason for it. And um, maybe now it's not that obvious, like coaches, uh, I know you're eager to get back on the ice and coaching, but um, I think there's a lot of way that we were able to support the kids and offering them different ways to train their bodies different ways to recalibrate their body because when you skate you always rotate more one way or you know like so now I feel that um, everybody of course is eager to go back to skating but they've worked their bodies in different ways they learn different skills they've been growing even doing part of choreography on the floor like we're just at opening up our minds and and expanding and um, and I'm really glad to see that almost all the, the skaters really committed to that new way of training. That's huge. Wow. It actually helped us to um, refocus right away on Olympic because it made it kind of easier to focus on the Olympic that way because, mm. because our else there's two seasons. So you have to focus on fully the season. If the season is long, you have to plan it. And now it's looking more like it's going to be a season and a half. So it's the, the or a half season, or, yeah. but it's Olympic, counting Olympic, yeah, yeah. and then so it's just preparing. Like what what are we doing to really prepare those uh, those the, the Olympics? And and it's it's been quite good and quite interesting. Yeah, it's given us a real pause to to really you know, focus on well being focus on you know maybe going to play outside and ride the bike and meditate and all things that you know just we've been trying to stay ahead and you know plan ahead and being all that but right now it just i think it it, it was necessary before olympic pre-olympic year and olympic year to have this this pause for the kids to heal their bodies and to feel like a deep rest nobody ever took a month and a half off <laughs> during in the middle of a quad that nobody does that who does that so yeah so i think it's it might it, it's going to be an interesting season for sure nobody knows if there'll be a grand prix season or not nobody knows if we'll be able to travel it's going to change 
the the season drastically but um being in resistance facing that possibility is not worth is not worth it so we're trying to be open-minded and flexible and also encouraging and supporting to our team i love this i think that's the pure um mindset of a champion that's show up deal with what is and expand and do your best with it so i'm sure that it's permeating through all of your athletes even though they're not with you every day so i'm sure it's, I'm sure it's making a big difference with your teams um we had a question that i don't know why i went it so long um <laughs> now let me see how do i ask this in a simple way uh this kind of goes into a little bit of like your training around holistic training. And we've kind of touched on it a lot in, in, in the past conversation in the last hour, almost, it's almost over crazy. Um, but the idea of holistic training from the inside out, do, like when people come to the school, do you have to kind of like, how do you get them un understanding that that's the way you're going to train them? Like, is it kind of easy to bring people into that mindset or does it take a few steps or does it kind of just change? Um, with, with bringing the athlete centered vision to life? It's an interesting question because um, some, some people come from very different, uh, different schools that train people differently. I mean, it's, it's a hard question I to find, answer. I find the philosophy easier to implement than the actual technique and skating and understanding of different like okay, the it's like oh yeah yeah that's how i want to train but once they do it it's like or once they learn how to move differently or it's like whoa <laughs> it's very different and then they feel overwhelmed sometimes uh especially yeah. by the technique part they feel super overwhelmed um no but even they have some of them come with a full baggage of uh of you know of ways they were they used to train or ways they used to come to the rink and be be scared because they didn't know what was going to happen or you know there's like different different mechanism that we have to slowly undo and get them to trust that yes you can you can smile and and have fun even if you do a double run through you know it doesn't take anything away from the work if you you're in a good mood if you have a good energy if you if you smile if you high five your the team that just finished a run a really good run like it's but yeah it's it's interesting but i think uh it it always takes about a year year and a half before anybody that comes into our circle really understands and appreciate the vibe that's that we're we're creating. creating and we're inviting people in i'm, I'm yeah i'm glad you explained that it does take time because i think you know it can sound i don't want to say like a utopia but you can sound sort of like easy and i don't think it's easy to create this or keep it going i, I know that we've talked a lot about environment and how to build it and mm -hmm. you have a lot of philosophy around you know how to speak to the athletes and how to make them have a safe place every day to come to and be fully authentic. But, right? I, but I also like the fact, Marie, you can say, you know, we can have a really good time. We can do this mm -hmm. with good energy if you're doing the work. And I agree with that. Like we can, you know, we can do a really good job, great energy, lots of it, but the work's gotta get done. The run-throughs have to get, I like that. I think it's a great way of approaching that. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. But laughing is a good way to circulate energy too, eh? Like I, I love to laugh and I find there's a lot of stress release. There's a lot of, you know, it's, it's just a good energy overall to have. So we, yeah, we like humor. We like to, to push people to go to their best version without going through um, stress and fear and, and pushing in a negative way. I love it. Well, speaking of laughing, between the three of you, I know there's a funny story somewhere. I know it. I know there's like a weird, weird, weird competition practice or you guys went in and saw Ben doing his triple axel sideways. There's got to be something hilarious that you can pull out here that has got to be a good story. <laughs> I, think, I think I'm going to have to share your nickname. Oh, don't Not the one Billy Rose gave you, though. <laughs> I gave you 15 years ago. 
So Ben, when we were doing Grand Prix together, he um, he always loved to hear us speak French. I think, weren't we maybe with Peltier or we were a bunch of French people together and he came to us and he said, uh, the only word I know in French is de barbouillette. But he, he always said like, it's the only word he knows, which means face cloth. Yes, face cloth. That's it. But it meant, but he would put it to any sauce, like with a lot of different expressions. So I always call him, still today, I call him de barbouillette. <laughs> oh, merci beaucoup. And I think, I think it was, I don't know whether it was Patrick was sitting in the cave or something, and I was about to begin the short program. I think it was in Four Continents or something in Osaka. And all I hear across, because the, the, the Japanese aren't very loud typically, when they, what I hear is, I don't know, if it was, I think it was Dave, but it was sitting together. Tabab, yeah. It just, it was, it was great. Anyway, I just want to tell you that story. But that was. When um, you go to compete, they yeah, yell the babu, yeah, Oh, yeah, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Did you have a good program? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember that day either. I think it was okay. You know, it was one of those whatever. Yeah. See? <laughs> but, uh, See what you really remember after after everything. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I think I don't know. I just remember Worlds 2000, right? When we went to where we were in Nice. Is that Nice? That oh. was uh, that. Was, there's so many great memories there too. I mean, I I just yeah, that was a, that was a fun one as well. Um, <laughs> I, I, I won't tell that story because I know, <laughs> no, but but it was it was great. Like I mean, you know, we it was just... probably my favorite world championship ever. It was yeah, probably because it was the first one. But to my memory, well, in Nice, it was I mean, nice. it's also it was a, nice. just an amazing competition. Yeah, that was that was amazing. Yeah. The team was mm. amazing. Yeah. yeah, the team was. Amazing. Mm -hmm. There's there are a few pictures floating around from that that time that I've seen, and everybody just looked so happy. Yeah, like that yeah. nice. You guys just looked like everyone was just together. It reminds me of what I when I see uh, the IM teams now. When you guys do the group photos, you know, I see that it's pretty cool. All right, we have a few questions. I just want to kind of bring them in. These are from the yeah. attendees, so I kind of want to just fold them in. Um, so someone's asking, what are the challenges that you face in coaching international teams? So I think the the challenge question is, I mean, for any coaching, but is there a challenge that comes with the international? Like, I always wonder, how do you handle all the federations? Like, there's got to be so many, how many emails do you answer in a week kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> handling all the different federations is definitely a challenge. Um, they so, all have their so we, function. So we each take our own federation that we manage. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's how we deal with it. There's no big secret around it. There's no department of federations? Okay. <laughs> Is, and if every federation has a, a functions differently. Actually, the hardest thing to manage is when we go to competition. Uh, managing the expenses of the coaches when we go to a competition with all the different <laughs> federations is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. It's a nightmare because every, they all function differently. Uh, so some for, will pay for the hotel room, some will pay for the uh, per diem, some will pay for flights, and, and but not all of them. And then you have to spread out. Yeah, we deal with nine and, federations, so it's it's a lot of federations too. And then organize. within on top of the federation, you have the our Olympic committees of those federations. Uh, so that's it's it's a that's a big big challenge. Hmm. Patch, I have to ask: Is there a spreadsheet for this? Uh, actually, no, not for oh. that. <laughs> we like. We know that it, it's always mainly the, the big federation, uh, like the big countries, uh, and we like we know which one we're taking care of, so it makes it easy. The next question, Mary, you're gonna love because someone's asking, "You are so stylish. Do you have a favorite store or city to shop in?" Oh my god! Um, <laughs> no, I'm I'm actually I think when. I go, I'm, I'm not a lover, a lover of shopping. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> shopping is not my favorite thing. If I need something, I, I plant the seed, then I, I have one or two, three stores that I really like. I'm so petite that I don't have a huge range. Uh, I do love shopping in Asia, Japan. Almost everybody is my size, so it makes it much easier to find pants that fit and and shirts that are my size, um, but uh, no, I'm. I think I know myself enough now that I'm in my forties, and uh, I, I dress to feel confident, to feel good and professional, or I choose what I, what I want to feel like in certain, 
circumstances and um and i go with my uh, my instinct i love it well clearly it's working we know this we know this i love it okay i'm gonna pick one more random little question um so do you work with young upcoming teams so not just senior but some you know novice junior of course we know you you do that as well a little bit um and do you work on any skate canada dance tests so i know that's sort of like another you know most people are doing the test dance so do you do both those things well we have a well at the ice academy we have a great team we have uh, what eight coaches we're about eight nice. coaches on ice. And um, I would say for the younger teams, uh, we delegate a lot to uh, Pascal Denis, José Piché, and uh, Benjamin Brisebois. They are specialists in development. Of course, we always keep an eye on everything. Um, we also like to make our top teams work a little bit with the younger ones because I think they're a great influence and for the top teams to learn how to, to coach and pass on the, the information is interesting. So, um, we and it's do something that. we're in the, because we, we don't have it. We find we don't have enough time or enough, uh, staff in your school to, to take on more and especially younger kids, but it's something we want to do. So we're in the process right now on, of, of, of putting a, a method together so we could, so that we can uh, certify coaches and we can have more co coaches working with us, but we want to make sure that they coach it with our philosophy and they were coaching the way methods. that we want in our methods uh, so that we could have more uh, younger kids and test skater and, and have a bigger, even, family like another an school to attached to our school so we can do more fantastic wow what a vision that's, i love that's, it that's exciting i love it now it's, I also interesting. it's been interesting to write our methods even choreography methods uh training methods and and technical methods it, it's it's taken us to a place of really reflecting on how we teach and what what's important and it's breaking it down so I think it's perfect that we have this pause right now. So we were able to really not go on, on the ice at all and just focus on write, writing the method. Um, and uh, it should be, I think, done in maybe in the summer. In maybe in the, at the end of the summer or, or by the end of the year for sure. But it, it was an interesting process. Sounds like a, a perfect time to work on It's very on that. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Another yeah. yeah. new project. Um, I have to uh, fold in the Stephanie question because I know Stephanie's done so much mental training with all four of us. And for those of you who haven't met her yet on one of the webinars, Stephanie Hanlon has been um, working with athletes way before us and continues way beyond and through the worlds of hockey, figure skating and beyond. But for, for the school, like you have that training philosophy, right? Your technical and then artistry. But I know that um, the mental training is something you guys are really involved with as well. Like, I, I'm sure there's never a client meeting where you sit down and go, oh, it doesn't matter as long as you're skating well, you know, <laughs> it's fine. No. So how do you, how do you integrate, whether it's with Stephanie or with anyone else, like the mental training capacity and, and how do you, how do you focus on it, but not over-focus on it? You know what I mean? Cause sometimes it can get, I think people can get a little too obsessed too. So how do you how do you create that in a healthy way? I guess is the simple way of, of asking it. Uh, well, Stephanie's coaching. I mean, we we fold it into our everyday coaching always because it's always present. It's, it's never always non, present. I don't think it's and, something that you have. Like we don't we're not focusing on it because it is it. Like it's <laughs> you can't coach without having without having some philosophy or psychology or you're always in it. That's what coaching is. So. I have to fold it in. It is in. But we're lucky <laughs> to have Stephanie as a partner in I Am, and uh, she is involved with some of the, a lot of the top skaters because it's true that our main job at the school is the skating part. So you know it's folded in our coaching. But if the kids need more, and they do need more outside of uh, of the ice, they do have to to manage their energy lives, uh, everything. So she has a, a, huge a impact big on impact on our school and it's she either, has her clients. It's either the athletes are working directly with her as a, as their personal, as her personal client or 
she's working with them through us so <laughs> that she's always present yeah we find the same we find the same and i love that you said uh it is it, it is <laughs> thank it. you pat <laughs> it's all this it's all one that's it yeah i love it it's perfect I'm so that's, fun. that's that's the way it is <laughs> so, oh my gosh i can't believe this is like almost over it's it's kind of sad but yeah, it's, has been, it's so fun to like just talk about stuff and not be in a rush which has been really lovely but ben i know that uh you well, wanted yeah. you wanted to ask you know, big questions. I, I i did and and i appreciate you giving me this this final one here from us too it says uh, you know and, and what message would you have to coaches and skaters as they now go back from being quarantined to stepping into a new normal. And I think that that's a very good one because we're all trying to do prediction here, right? We're all trying to think about what it's going to look like or how it's going to look like. But I, I really like to throw that out to you guys right now um, on, um, yeah, on that big question. Hmm. <laughs> we're, we're starting right now the we're in the process of figuring out what we want to be on the other side of, of this quarantine. Uh, we're, we're doing some work with ourselves, with our coaching staff, also with our skaters deciding that. Um, of course, we're going to have to manage the environment because I don't think we can go back just, you know, running into the rink like nothing happened. Um, there'll be a little bit of, of fear around going back to public spaces and around training and all this. So we'll have to manage the environment to make sure everyone feels safe. Um, I think well, nobody has skated in seven, eight weeks. We don't know. We hope it's going to start soon. But of course, they kept training their bodies and their emotions and their minds and, and all of this. But, you know, we'll have to reaccess the ice, I think, slowly, very respectfully. Mm -hmm only possibly four teams at a time, not more. Um, taking our temperature every morning and every night, making sure there's like a huge respect in this regard. Um, I think no rushing. No rushing. Uh, this season will be what it is. Keeping an eye on and our focus on the longer, longer, longer goals, mm -hmm. longer picture. Uh, and this season will just fold himself in. Um, it's part of history, regardless what happens. I mean, we're in a hist historical time in our lives. And um, on the other side of it, we'll probably all be stronger and figure out new ways to train people and to, uh, to make uh, more efficient decisions and make things go maybe a little bit faster. Or I I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But we're really... This is our effort for the next week is to deconfine, <laughs> deconfine people, the deconfinement. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a great point to bring up that the long view is going to be really important to keep in mind and not to rush. I really, I appreciate your words. I needed to hear that. Well, it's true. And, and, and even now too, you know, we have our own provincial stuff, right? And we're mm -hmm. governed under certain things, right? So once you're governed under certain things, you can make certain decisions, right? Yeah. Once you do have the knowledge. But like I say, I like, I just like the approach of, okay, once we do have some information, once we do know, then I like the no rush test. I think it was a brilliant, brilliant addition to that. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we all know that you can plan all you want, you know, but plans are made to be flexible and to, yeah. Yeah, 100%. That was, that was excellent. I love it. So much plan A, B, C, D, E, <laughs> F, We've, G. Yeah, I think we went through the whole H. alphabet of plans <laughs> in the past seven weeks, but yeah. but we're all fine. We're healthy, and and if we look at the bigger picture, I think we'll just look back at this as wow, the whole world was on pause or on reset. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Yeah, hundred percent. Spectacular and. Okay, I'm gonna ask like quick rapid fire questions, okay? Yeah. So, um, Patch, what is Marie's favorite relaxation technique for herself? What helps her relax? Uh, right now, it's, uh, it's, it's meditation and walking her dog. Ding, 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 looks like you won. <laughs> all right, all right. So, what is the, what is 
Patch's way to de-stress. If he gets stressed, how does he de-stress? <laughs> uh, I would say uh, vanish in the couch in front of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Turn the brain off, right? Exactly. <laughs> you forgot the glass of wine. But... Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, which one of you two is better at making decisions quickly? Ah, boom. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> which one of you two is more of a morning person? The ah, morning. Oh. <laughs> that was easy too. There we go. <laughs> Which person um, is more stubborn? Oh, um, oh. oh <laughs> that one wasn't so easy. There we go. <laughs> uh, I, have to, I have to ask this is good, good relationship good. question. <laughs> okay. That's pretty stubborn. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, when it comes to work, who is better at being able to turn it off? Hmm. Ah. For sure. Okay. Mine still keeps going. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, someone's raising their hand. Oh my right? Yeah. Definitely. But I'm working on that. Well, on different levels, on different things. Yeah. Um, like. It's, it's true. We're triggered yeah, by yeah, different things. Yeah yeah. 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 It's more the managing the and the planning, and then if there's something that's not going well in that area, I have a hard time letting go. And maybe it's on the choreography side, and she can. Once you start listening to music or planning a program or thinking about a program, or if there's a program that's not going well, it's, it's, it's like she'll, she'll won't sleep for her until it's, it's figured out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's true. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I thought that was fun. Just some rapid fire, right? Good questions at the end. It's good. We, ha we have a few more questions that are um, sort of in there, but is there anything you just want to leave us with as far as what you guys are inspired by and, and what keeps you doing all this? Because I know, obviously, you're at home, but putting a lot of effort into what you do still every single day. So what inspires you guys to keep going in this, in this time and, and always? What, what brings you forward like that? I think it's, uh, I think it's our, our, ki our kids, I say our kids. I think it's the skaters. Yeah. I think it's the skaters. It's the fire be behind their eyes and in their heart and how driven they are and how committed they are and this is so inspiring when somebody's all fired up about a new concept an idea or you know and and achieving goals and overcoming challenges and they come on the other side so grown and so strong i mean this is really inspiring yeah it's very inspiring especially the when you they have like seeing a community like they have and seeing them push each other and train together and help each other is so inspiring and so fun to see like my all my best memories of, of the past 10 years uh, are not uh, any of the medals are all around training times and like before the olympics when all the the, top, la the last uh, training before training we left to olympics, olympics was amazing seeing Always all of them push that. each other and help each other and have fun together it's 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 though it's i think that's the thing that keeps us and keeps me going I love it. Sounds like the vision of I am is now the own its own engine that is <laughs> building the building that for you guys. Is there anything else that you wanted to add on? I, I, I just like that last one, Patch. I think I, I think it's excellent. And you know, it's just been great having you both on today. And we thank you so much for this opportunity to of course engage with us because we wanted to, but also <laughs> to, uh, to be on the live webinar and to um, to have this conversation. So uh, thank you both so much for this today. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. It was fun. And good luck with skating success. Yes. Good luck to all the coaches that are at home. And I'm sure um, you can take this pause and this little bit of time to, uh, you know, to inspire yourself to be better at what you do when you go back on the ice. The kids will be really happy to see you again. I know we can't wait to see our skaters and give them real hugs and not just virtual little hellos. <laughs> and the time will come. Very soon, I think. Until that time. time, yeah. I it love it. Great. Thank you both so much. Thank you. That was Thank great. You. Always good to Thank see you. you. Thanks, Bye. everyone, for being on. Have a great day, everybody. Au revoir. Stay healthy. <laughs>